And no, the answer isn't, hey, why don't you just buy a Toyota? Oh, I kid, Scotty. I love Toyotas too. But anyway, do it yourself first. Today, I'm gonna give you my top five tips on how you can make sure your engine and transmission lasts a very long time. And to be clear, we're not gonna talk about basic stuff like making sure your tires are inflated properly or making sure you change your brake pads or shoes on time or even changing your air filter. We're going to talk exclusively about how you can avoid catastrophic engine or transmission failure. Now, whether you subscribe to my channel or whether you're going to be subscribing, make sure you click on the bell notification that's right next to the subscribe button because unless you click on that, you're not going to be notified of my new videos that are going to be coming out. So there are a few different ways where an engine can suffer a catastrophic failure. But at number five, we'll start with a lack of lubrication. So obviously not only you wanna change your oil on time, but also you wanna make sure you switch over to a synthetic oil, even if your car doesn't require it. Because synthetic oil is just simply a better oil. It does a much better job of lubricating all the internal parts of your engine and therefore reducing friction. But not just that, you really wanna make sure you replace your oil with the correct viscosity. So as some of you know, a lot of wear and tear happens to the internal parts of your engine at startup, like your piston rings and your main and rod bearings. And that's obviously because your oil pump that goes on the front here hasn't had a chance to pump pressurized oil through the system and lubricate everything. Now even more wear and tear happens at the first startup after an oil change. And that's because if you did your oil change right, you also replaced your engine oil filter and now it's obviously empty. So your engine oil pump has to first fill this up before oil can go from here to all the internal parts of your engine and lubricate them. Now what you can do to remedy this is to first, obviously if this goes on vertically on your engine, to fill this with oil before you install it on the engine. But if it goes on at an angle, what you can do is to first disable your fuel system by pulling your fuel pump relay or your fuel injector fuse. And then what you do is turn over the engine for two or three 10 second intervals. And what this does is fills up the oil filter at a much lower RPM for the engine and therefore less wear and tear happens to the internal parts of your engine. All right, so at number four, if your engine is equipped with one and especially if it's an interference engine, you wanna make sure you replace the timing belt on time. Because as the name suggests, your timing belt is responsible for when your intake and exhaust valves open in relation to the position of your piston. Now on an interference engine, it means that your piston and your valves occupy the same area or space inside your engine. Now if your engine loses the ability to time itself, whether the timing belt breaks or it slips, your valves will hit your piston causing catastrophic engine failure. But not only you wanna make sure you replace the timing belt, but it's also key that you replace all your timing belt components, like your timing belt tensioner and your idler pulley. All right, so coming at number three, another main cause of engine failure is overheating. Now, besides the obvious one, like uh, replacing your coolant on time, etc., there are a couple of other components that you need to keep a close eye on. All right, so first up, your water pump, which is usually easily replaced when you go to replace your timing belt. So if you have a car that has a timing belt, make sure with the timing belt you replace the water pump as well. Now, if you don't know when was the last time that water pump was replaced on your car, most water pumps come with a little weep hole on the side where coolant starts leaking from when that water pump is on its way out. So you can keep an eye on that hole, that's what she said, and replace the water pump at the first side of a leak. And you also wanna make sure you replace the thermostat on your vehicle as well, because as you may know, your thermostat is supposed to be closed when you first start your vehicle, then when the coolant reaches a certain temperature, it's supposed to open and let the coolant flow through the engine to the radiator, and then be cooled at the radiator and be pumped back through the engine again. So if you have a bad thermostat and it doesn't open, for example, the coolant doesn't get to flow from the engine through the radiator where it gets cooled, and it's just gonna get hotter and hotter, your engine's gonna get hotter and it's gonna overheat, and that's not gonna be a happy day. Now, another potential cause for overheating that's usually overlooked is this guy right here, your radiator cap. See, the job of this cap is to withstand a certain amount of pressure that gets built up inside your cooling system before it allows the coolant to go into your overflow tank. See, as cooling gets hotter, it wants to expand and builds up pressure inside the, your entire cooling system. Now, if your cooling system, with the help of your radiator cap, can withstand a certain amount of pressure or pressurize that coolant, it increases the coolant's boiling temperature. So, for example, as you can hopefully see, this cap is rated at 16 pounds. So, it basically means it can withstand 16 pounds of pressure before it opens and allows coolant to go from your radiator to your overflow tank. Now, what happens is that these caps don't usually flat out fail, but what happens is that over time they get weaker and then they cannot support the correct PSI that they were 
rated for. So in my opinion, as good insurance, you should replace your radiator cap at every 60,000 miles or so. All right, so coming at number two, we're gonna talk about how you can maintain an automatic transmission. All right, so obviously you should replace your transmission fluid and filter at the factory specified intervals. Now, besides that, if you have a car that's, let's say, known for having transmission issues, or maybe you have a truck or an SUV that you use a lot for towing, or maybe you simply want your automatic transmission to last four or 500,000 miles, what you can do is to install a separate transmission oil cooler from the factory oil cooler. So as we've discussed in the past, a lot of times your transmission oil cooler is an integrated part of your radiator. However, what you can do is to install a separate cooler exclusively for your transmission oil. And by doing this, you can more consistently lower the automatic transmission oil temperature. And the cooler the transmission oil is, the more lubrication it can provide the internal parts of your transmission, like the clutch backs. Now, something else you might want to consider when you place your transmission fluid and filter is to flush the inside of your transmission. As I've demonstrated in the past on this truck specifically, there's a DIY method where you can replace all the fluid that's inside your transmission. And that's what I really mean by a transmission flush, making sure all the fluid inside your transmission is replaced whenever you drop the pan and replace the transmission fluid because if you don't do this, you're only replacing maybe half or so of the transmission fluid that your transmission uses. All right, so coming at number one, you should always use OEM parts whenever you're replacing a critical component on your engine or transmission. So for example, your thermostat, radiator cap, water pump, timing belt, timing belt components. These are some of the things as we talked about that when they fail, they can cause a catastrophic engine or transmission failure. You know, and things like oil pan gaskets, valve cover gaskets, or brake pads, you can use aftermarket parts to save some money because if they fail, you might have a small oil leak or noisy brakes for a while, but if the components that we talked about fail, <laughs> all of a sudden on a car that you were expecting to get, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand miles out of, you're not gonna get nothing near that. You might even get, you know, under hundred thousand miles. So if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, but even more importantly, make sure you watch this video right here or this video here. I'll let you decide. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.